is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is The Chris Abraham Show, Season 5, Episode 55. I'm Chris Abraham, and it's a glorious day here in Northern Virginia, South Arlington. And I am a man called Chris Abraham. Um, I'm highly amused with whatever's going on with Trump et al. Because every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and... Um, under the guise of by any means necessary, there are going to be secondary effects that are going to happen for the next 50 years. So used to be that the left and right both knew that attacking a current or former president in ways above words and press was mutually assured destruction. There was a kind of a detente based on the fact that people knew that coming after a former president uh, was a terrible precedent. And to do such a thing would quickly result in terrible side effects, which is to say uh, the first person who attacks uh, not only defines, not only defines uh, the, uh, the fight, but uh, actually creates the floor of the fight. So... Um, by relying things like RICO or going after someone uh, legally for things that are clearly um, protected under free speech in the First Amendment, to go after a former president over um, horse trading and aggressive negotiations and going after a president for things that are totally on not only tape but video— recorded in a time before deepfakes where people like Hillary Clinton and everybody else is calling for the same kind of thing, the exact same kind of thing. And it's very easy to show hypocrisy and to sh- and people think that, uh, like, for example, in college, I stole Karen Chalupsky from my fraternity brother because... I was better looking, and the girl was into me. And uh, But it didn't matter. The rules of the game were that even though my brother hadn't slept with Karen, it doesn't matter. Even though he was in the friend zone, he still had dibs on Karen Chalupsky. So, ergo, like I, as a brother in the fraternity, based on bro rules, was, like, prevented through good form and norms and values, from pursuing her. But she was so ripe on the vine, and I'd never seen a girl like that, and I wanted her so badly. And she looked at me with those eyes, and those weren't just pretty eyes. Those were eyes that wanted me, and that wasn't normal either. So I I went for it. like, And we had a, a crazy, passionate, heartbreaking romance over the end of term and the beginning of the summer. We even lived together at a really roach-infested DuPont, uh, like 14th and R, 13th and R, maybe. Was it DuPont or was it, wasn't DuPont, it was uh, like 13th, 13th and R, maybe. Anyway, the story was, is it was too good to not do in the short game, but the rules of engagement are very clear with regards to what is and isn't civil because um, those are well-hewn, well-discerned, well-tested laws over thousands of years that say if you are opportunistic, then even though, you know, it's even though the situation is dire in your mind and you're literally preventing Hitler a vindictive, an openly vindictive and um, revenge-seeking 
next president who is obviously going to become president if all things are created equal and if democracy works according to the way it should, representative democracy, I'm saying, with regards to just the timber, timbre of the, uh, of the nation. I mean, black folks and Latin folks and immigrants and Mexicans and Salvador, like a lot of people are going to vote for Trump. So you need to get Trump off the table and by any means necessary, which is to say breaking all constitutional interpretations, breaking all previous interpretations of RICO, breaking all understandings of the First Amendment and and the right to use words in forceful ways and the and the precedent for horse trading and go get me this and and threats and saber rattling and all this other stuff. All these precedents that people completely understand and both sides use um, rigorously and vigorously to the point of pain, to the point of uh, Gitmo interrogator, um, just short of waterboarding. Uh, now that the by any means necessary uh, stricture is being implemented, all bets are off, all gloves are off, and everybody's got a knife. And it's not, it's not 20 paces, it's not gentlemanly, it is jungle rules. So it's not even octagon. It's freaking jungle rules. It's it's um it's the equivalent of cutting off the ears of your enemies and stringing them up onto a necklace to show your kills. And everybody who is a everybody who is a neolib liberal democrat is going to get rewarded for every ear that they have on their necklace. Whatever the outcome in the future, if you martyred yourself no matter what the outcome, if you hobbled or took out or threw your bolo at the feet of the former president, if you took your shot, if you showed your loyalty, if you sacrificed your bar uh, membership, um, your legal, uh, comment dit, your legal license, if you sacrificed your, I don't know, your understanding of the law, of the Constitution, if you um, played rough and tumble with the truth. If you lied under oath, anything to prevent this vindictive monster, this former, future, current Nazi, Hitler, you know, freaking Stalin, Lenin, Putin, Voldemort, uh, literally, you know, monster, Satan, devil, coward, stud, monster, fat shit, piece of shit, orange man bad. Like if you are going to, what do they say in the dating world? Take a shot. You will be re rewarded whether or not that shot hits. Because even if you were willing to put on the bomb vest and you were willing to go into the, uh, into the fresh market in the middle of town on a Sunday when everybody's there, whether or not when you push the button, whether or not the vest detonates, it proves to everybody, you didn't know that, it proves to everybody that you were willing to uh, blow up your entire career, you were willing to blow up an entire uh, market full of uh, civilians, you were willing to take uh, and do whatever it takes to prevent, by any means necessary, and I'm surprised they haven't tried to assassinate Trump. Yikes. That's the next step, right? That's the, that's the, if, if by any means necessary means that you're going to probably try to take a literal poke at the big guy, right? So um, all that being said, this is going to ruin a lot of careers on both sides. This is going to make becoming president in, even more toxic than it was before. But not only that, it's going to make it toxic to be a judge it's going to make it toxic to be a public defender. Uh, it's going to be toxic to be a public prosecutor. It's going to be toxic to be of counsel. It's going to be toxic to be a lawyer. It's going to be toxic to be a politician. It's going to be toxic to be a mayor, a governor, a DA, an AUSA, anything, anything. 
it's going to be going from being deep state to being surface state. There's going to be so much attention and energy spent at popularizing and turning the people who used to be dark in the background, just doing their job into not only public officials, but people are going to be actively doxxed, actively intimidated. Nobody's going to want to uh, volunteer as a, um, as a juror. Nobody's going to want to be a juror. Why would you want to be a juror? If someone outs you or if someone intimidates you, or if you're convinced that if uh, you get doxxed and revealed for judging for or against the wrong right person, then your life is, you've, your life has gone public. You've been revealed. People are going to try even harder to avoid um, como de, uh, jury duty because what price, right? What price? Before, people didn't want jury duty because it would inconvenience them. They didn't want to do it. They thought it was beneath them. They had money to make. They had mouths to fill. Um, jury duty is something that's nice if you have nothing else to do, if you're homeless or unemployed or bored or, um, you know, housewife or husband, wife or whatever, house husband, you know, if you ain't got nothing going on, if you don't, if you ain't got no hustle, then you can do jury duty. But now, uh, jury do jur jurors are putting their life on the line. This is more of a sacrificial lamb moment. And I don't know, like the only people who would willing to martyr themselves for the act of like, it's like a self-selecting thing, right? You never want the president to be anybody who wants to be president. You never want uh, an NGO to be headed by someone who um, is a true believer. You want someone with a with a, a savvy mind. You know, you want someone who has um, uh, insouciance, who has a certain level of professional distance, so as to keep uh, a little bit of separation between. Uh, you know, to make sure that you don't Icarus yourself and ever go so close to the sun, right? And we're learning more and more the downsides of fame, the downsides of celebrity, the downsides of, um, of virality. Uh, you have the uh, woman, and I think she's hot too. Like, I totally think that the crazy woman on the plane is uh, Stone Cold Fox, the one who's like, you don't know, that mf -er is not real. That mf -er is not real. Like, that's my kind of girl. Anyway, so... Uh, I don't know, like back to this, like it's not about Trump. It's about the precedent and it's about the gauntlet thrown down and the gauntlet thrown down uh, doesn't include uh, head guards, doesn't include face guards, doesn't include mouth guards, doesn't include uh, padded um, uh, kidney pads. It doesn't include um, only above, only above the, the belt. It doesn't include uh, big, puffy um, boxing gloves. This is now to Fight Club, right? And I'm entertained by Fight Club. I like seeing someone uh, be brought to the brink of death uh, by getting accidentally hit in such a way that something terrible happens and there's extreme brain trauma. But I'm fucked up. So what means now, what, what by anything's necessary means that, I mean, listen, the right understands all this. The right understands this and is really leery uh, about going full neo-lib, right? Um, but it's going to happen eventually. And like the biggest fear in the last 50 years um, that I've known as a consistency is nobody wants to wake the giant. Nobody wants to wake the giant. There's incredible, like consistency by the left and the right with regards to taxes and unemployment and um, opportunism and capitalism and religion and guns like everybody's afraid of waking up this extremely like they're still living in the 1970s they're still living in the 1950s they're still living in the 1980s they're still living in the 1990s these people who are just like metro bulo dodo. They're just working for a living, working for a living. Huey Lewis on the news. I forget all the rest of the lyrics. 
there's a great next line that I can't remember. Please remind me. Um, comment dire. Yeah, so now that the gloves are off, what's going to happen? Is there always going to be this level of danger? Is it going to result in even worse uh, uh, prospects for um, judges, for um, defendants, for prosecutors, uh, for defenders? Um, is, are people going to be leery of criminal law? Are people going to be leery of public service? Are people going to be leery even of joining things like school boards or joining things like uh, local uh, elections or city, town, village elections? Are people not going to want to volunteer in the police department? That's already happening. Are people not going to be want to, wanting to be um, FBI agents? Are people not going to want to be um, Homeland Security agents? Are people not going to want to be U.S. Marshals? Are people not going to want to be um, uh, shit. working for sheriff's departments, whether it's state or local, um, there's going to be opportunity costs because if there's no rules and there's no protection and the thin blue line doesn't have any guards up to protect itself from the slings and arrows of public prosecution and hearts and minds warfare, and if you know that even if you do a good kill on the wrong person, that record will be memory hold and they'll still, your life will still be ruined. And the person that you righteously killed in defense of yourself for another, for your brothers in, in blue, no, you don't know what going to play. It won't matter. Uh, the dirtbag will still become a martyr and be celebrated every year for his brutal, unjust police killing so so uh you know and i mean the first warning shots have everything to do with uh with hunter biden so depending on how well hunter biden survives this attack and depending on how below the belt or how you know knuckle sandwich or how like shiv this is gonna be this is gonna be um prison fighting right there's going to be shivs there's going to be box cutters there's going to be brass knuckles there's going to be push daggers there's going to be saps it's going to be freaking awesome and uh and uh the left is going after jared kushner and that's proactive against the hunter biden uh but nobody will ever stop pursuing hunter biden and uh biden really should just uh, lose and die or do his next term and die because he will always be hunted and the uh, crazy thing is that the whole idea of uh, Biden crime family has now become kind of etched in stone and everybody uh, who's to the right of center right is only saying Biden crime family they're not saying the Bidens uh they're not saying, you know, what is it, Linda or Lydia or uh, Larry? What, what's Biden's wife's name? Mrs. Dr. Biden. And uh, it's going to be really fun to see uh, what revenge looks like. Um, it'll be even crazier to see what Trump's revenge is if he happens to avoid capture, become the next president and then self uh uh, you know, self, uh, uh, liberate himself, pardon, self pardon, which they say is unprecedented, but add that unprecedented self pardoning to the giant pile. Uh, I mean, back in the day with JFK, everybody knew that John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy were boning Marilyn Monroe, but it was just, it was just not done. People didn't, people didn't consider and this is the way the French, uh, uh, the French president was always treated. Um, there is, you are the office of the president in anything outside the office of the president is, uh, is off, is off the reservation. Now it'll be really interesting to see what happens with regards to, uh, Barack Obama. Uh, right now they're spending a lot of time on podcasts and Fox news and 
it's mostly on podcasts like Alex Jones and Glenn Beck and No Agenda Show and even Megyn Kelly, where they're going on and on and on that um, it's still there that uh, that um, Obama is our first Kenyan president and Obama is our first gay president. And uh, Michelle Obama, who they call Big Mike, is our first trans first lady. Um, so like that's happening and that's becoming way more popular and, um, it's just really entertaining and I'm not allowed to eat popcorn, but, uh, I just don't know where it's going to go. And everybody always creates a giant distraction, uh, in order to distract away from these sort of, uh, diabolical and quite, um, quite possibly mutually destructive, uh, infights. But, I mean, we're completely not caring at all about Maui, really. We're completely not caring at all about Ukraine. We don't care about Russia at all anymore. We don't care about, um, uh, like, Assad's Syria. We don't care about, uh, we don't care about, um, about Niger. We don't care about the coups there. We don't care about anything that's happening in the world of, uh, of um, Central and South America, we really don't care what's going on actually in Mexico. So with all that being said, I mean, I don't even think we'll care if there's like a low yield nuclear, like local area, local like nuclear catastrophe, because this, this country is extremely nimby and everybody doesn't want to wake up, like I said, the moral majority, those uh, naturally conservative people who just want to be left alone. And if you wake them up, they could organize in a very hysterical manner in a way that would make the 20% that are currently uh, pawning or owning us as a country, dominating us, leading us, um, transitioning us, training us, culturally revolutionizing us. All those people are going to really realize that they're only 20% of the population and when the 80% gets annoyed enough, um, the back end of the 80% against the little guy is generally not only terrifying, but completely destructive and uh, way more painful than the uh, types of trauma that most people are celebrating in their uh, relatively um, gentle, sweet, first-ish world lives. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. I hope you're well. This was Season 5, Episode 55 of The Chris Abraham Show. Mahalo. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.